Welcome to season four of your next mission video podcast. We have a great show for you today that focuses on education. Dr. Rebecca Solitar and Dr. Richard Arona from Purdue Global join us to talk about education and the different offerings they have for active duty military and veterans. That includes their military physician assistant preparation program, which is making a difference in the lives of our military. You won't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Your Next Mission video podcast, where we tell the stories of those who have served in the past and those who are serving today. From transition to financial wellness, VA benefits to mental health, we cover issues facing veterans, active military, and their families. Now here's your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Hello out there, warriors, past and present, and your families, and thank you for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, and USAA for making your next mission happen. They love our veterans and families. I'm going to say it every week. We love them, too. As I said earlier, we have a great show focusing on education, and I'm so excited to introduce from Purdue Global, Dr. Rebecca Solator interim dean of the School of Health Science, and Dr. Richard Arona, director of military health and nursing, and command sergeant major, United States Army, HUA, retired. Hula. Welcome to the yes. show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. I look forward yeah, to the Yeah, super glad to be here. Yes, <laughs> Thank well, you I, for having us. I appreciate you guys coming on the show. Before we get started here, you can see I'm already pumped up talking about education, but before we get started here, could you tell the audience just a little bit uh, about yourself? And Dean, we're going to start with you first. Absolutely. Professionally, I hold a doctorate in pharmacy and master of science in nutritional science. In the nutrition realm, I've worked with individuals and teams from recreational to Olympic athletes. I've practiced pharmacy in various settings and held key management positions in the pharmaceutical industry. Additionally, I coordinated a research trial for the VA hospital system. And that's where my appreciation for our veterans grew. I became determined to make a positive difference in that population. And now I translate that dedication to the academic space. My career in higher education includes faculty and department chair positions nationally and abroad, serving as an associate dean and now as an intern dean. I'm very fortunate to partner with Dr. Arona, amongst others, to support our military vets and their families at Purdue Global. Well, thank you very much. I'm just going to say, Sergeant Major, Dr. Rona, I'm just going to say, Sergeant, go ahead. Give, tell us a little bit That's about so yourself. Thank you. <laughs> and again, thank you for having us. I grew up in the great state of New Mexico. I graduated from high school in a small town called Alamogordo, New Mexico. And I joined the military actually one week after graduation. I uh, spent 30 years in the military. I was in the uh, dental field. I was a dental sergeant major for the Army. Uh, the fourth ever. So I was really proud of that. I used the Army education system while I was active duty, pursuing my educational dreams uh, in the evening, uh, going to school uh, through various different installations wherever I was stationed, and eventually uh, earned my master's degree while I was active duty and started my PhD, which I finished shortly after I retired from the military. I currently serve, as you mentioned, as the Director of Health and Nursing for the military side of the house for Purdue. I'm also a professor and get to teach our health science for our military uh, students, so I'm really proud of that also. I currently reside in the uh, San Antonio area, just north of San Antonio, where I retired from Fort Sam Houston here. and love the area here, and I am super blessed to continue to work with our service members, helping them pursue their educational dreams. Well, first of all, let me start out by saying uh, thank you guys for what you're doing. I mean, uh, thank you for all you're doing for our military. And I'm excited to, to talk to you about in the ways that you're helping uh, our active duty military and veterans. Dean, what is the Purdue Global's affiliation with the military overall and then specifically in the School of Health Science? I'd love to address that. So Purdue Global is an Indiana public nonprofit institution that is part of the Purdue University family. Our typical students, our working adults, and the members of the military who require the flexibility that online education offers. In our School of Health Sciences, 
over one third of our population is military or veteran. And as a school and institution, we're nimble enough to bring creative solutions to military needs. Two quick examples, through establishing a solid relationship with METSI, we were able to bridge a gap. This resulted in military-only associate degrees in health science and our new military physician assistant preparation concentration in our Bachelor of Science in Health Science. Purdue Global also articulates military training into credit, and this is in recognition of the intense learning and skills our service people have gained. Uh, I, I, I can't get over saying, Dr. Rona, I got to call you a Sergeant Major. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm Dr. Sergeant. Well, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> Sergeant Major, it seems to me that Purdue Global is really focused on a lot of really helping the military. Why is that? Uh, probably because you got 30 I'm years in the military. Yes. <laughs> we, yes and, and that's one of the reasons I, I signed up for working with Purdue. They recognize and, and respect our military. They've gone through so much in researching the training, researching the lessons plans, the curriculum. And what's unique about Purdue is we go beyond the ACE guide. We've heard about the ACE guide, which provides college credit for, for military training. Well, we go beyond that SMA where we'll do faculty reviews of that curriculum and we'll find additional credit to award credit where it's deserved. So really proud of that program. Rebecca mentioned the medical education and training campus. That is our world's largest military training uh, campus here at Fort Sam Houston. If you remember BRAC 2005, which was a base realignment, that law stipulated that we'd have uh, all of our military training for medical assigned here at Fort Sam Houston. So that brought the Air Force, the Navy, and the Army together as one at Fort Sam Houston. So in that footprint, we were able to build uh, programs based on their needs. That's what's unique about us because we don't just build programs. We find out what the needs are. In bringing those three services together, the Air Force had a requirement for their instructors to have a two-year degree to be on the podium and teach. Army and Navy didn't have that. So we had to bring them up to speed. Therefore, we built the Associates of Science speed to degree, five classes, and they were able to obtain their associate's degree and get on the podium and do their job. So really proud of uh, what we do at Purdue, and we go beyond the normal universities in understanding what the military needs are. Well, you talked a lot on the prep call about uh, all the programs you have really created for senior NCOs. Was a lot of those programs you're just talking about that? Is there some additional programs you have for senior NCOs? Yes. No, the one I was talking about for the NCOs specifically uh, we identified through the Sergeant's Majors Academy and through TRADOC that many of our Sergeant's Majors were getting to the academy and they had no degree. They had very little college, if any. They had spent their entire years focusing on taking care of troops and never took care of their self education-wise. So what we were able to do is go through the NCOS system, evaluate all of the different levels of their training and award credit appropriately. We built a small group management associate's degree, which went into a professional studies degree at the bachelor's level, and finally, a management and leadership degree at the master's level. From start to finish, if you're a senior NCO, is 24 classes. Unbelievable. So that's one of the uh, main programs we've built for senior NCOs. But uh, bottom line is we've evaluated every single MOS in the Army, all 20 of the Coast Guard ratings. We've done the Marine MOSs and uh, some of the Navy and Air Force as we continue building that process and build pathways based on their skill sets and what they've done in the military. Yeah, I think it was really neat. I mean, even going through basic training, and advanced individual training, you get so many college credit hours just for that little first part. I, I don't remember how many it is, but uh, uh, and it's really funny. Sometimes people don't realize how many college credit hours they have. So it's important for them, especially if they're getting ready to transition out of the military, to take their transcripts to uh, you know a school like Purdue and say, review my transcript and see how many college credit hours they have. I'm glad you mentioned that, SMA. I want to throw this in there. We have a, a very unique tool that uh, other schools don't have. It's called our military credit estimator. Yeah. You can go on our website, type in your military service affiliation. For example, I'm Army. I'd type in Army. Then I'd click on my MOS 
and then my rank. And automatically, you hit the search bar. It pops up with the degree plan, how many credits you are away from your degree. That's worst case scenario. That's before we even evaluate your transcripts. So it gives you an on-the-spot uh, number of credits that you'll have required left to earn your degree. So we're really proud of that tool also. Most other schools require you to turn in your transcripts, takes a couple weeks before you even get an answer on where you stand. We can do that within seconds with our calculator. Oh, wow. Hey, Dean, to take that a step farther, what makes Purdue, uh, you know, understand that the military is so unique? Yeah, we have holistic support for the military. So we have dedicated military admissions and advising. We have a director for the military student experience, a department chair who's over the military programs as a vet. We have a military advisory board to provide guidance. And on our faculty, just like Dr. Dr. Arona, we have uh, vets, we have active duty, we have military spouses, so they can truly relate to our students. These are also really supportive. We've talked a bit about the articulation of that military training for credit. We also have a military leave of absence. And in our Center for Career Advancement, we have one of our vets who's building our skill bridge program. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that's I'm really glad, I guess you have a lot of people that are military that, that are working like Dr. Rona is working with you that, mm -hmm. I guess, answer phones or talk to people when they call that, that, are, uh, that are veterans that can sort of walk them through the process when they come to Purdue. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Rohn, you want to add anything to that? Yes, as you mentioned, uh, we're very excited. I forgot to say Sergeant department. Major. I should say Sergeant Major, not Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but our, uh, our military outreach team is made up of all retired CSMs and Sergeant's Majors. So we have a, a plethora of experience on that team. Uh, Sergeant's Majors who care about service members who are out there uh, showing them our, our programs, more importantly, ident identifying other needs that we can take back to our, our deans like Rebecca and say, hey, we need to build a program. There's a need for this. Similar to what we'll talk about later with the IPAP and the MPAP program that we built for our, our service members. The other thing I want to mention uh, that is unique to us is we have what we call a Purdue Global Commitment. So you can come to school for three weeks, and if you don't like it, Guess what? You're just on your way. No hard feelings, no payment, no no commitment, no anything. You tried it. It wasn't for you. And you're on your way. So that's another uniqueness that we have with our university. Yeah. I, you know, I could use that every day. Go for three weeks. You feed me, take care of me. Is that right? Or I just go for school. Right, right, right. Yes. It's, it's like buying a car. You drive it around for three weeks. Oh, I don't like this thing. And take it back. And guess what? You had three, three weeks of fun with the car. And just take it back. Take it back. This is a great discussion. Hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. We're talking with Dr. Rebecca Zolotar, Interim Dean of the School of Health Science, and Dr. Richard Rona, Sergeant Major, got to throw that in there, Director of Military Health and Nursing, and Command Sergeant Major, Hua, U.S. Army Hua. Retired, both from Purdue Global. And you're watching your next mission video podcast with me, your host, Jack F. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this discussion, and I know that you are, because we're talking about something that can help you, please like us. Click on that subscribe button below. Also, click on the bell next to the subscribe button to receive notifications of all of our upcoming video podcasts. Uh, Dean, during this segment, I want to get into the Inter Service Physical Assistance Program, and Sergeant Major just mentioned, also known as IPAT. How does, how does Purdue Global uh, using to help this prepare active duty military for a, you know, a career in physician assistant? So we're really excited about this. Dr. Rona brought this opportunity to me and I said, absolutely, there's a need. We're going to meet it. So we recently launched what we're calling our military physician assistant preparation concentration within our bachelor of science and health science degree. And it's designed to meet the educational requirements for the service people who are interested in pursuing IPAP. The structure of the concentration is really unique because some of the program's core and major requirements are also the IPAP requirements. So we were able to integrate the concentration seamlessly into the degree. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sergeant Major, I'm not going to mess it up again. Do you want to add anything to that? I do want to add something. So we identified this, again, through 
requesting or surveying our students, our current students. And we identified that many of them wanted to become PAs, but they didn't have that clear pathway to become it. They'd have to go to different schools to fulfill the 10 prerequisites that are required. It's those tough courses, the biologies, the chemistries, the anatomy and physiologies, those types of courses. So what we decided to do was to embed those 10 requirements into our bachelor's program. So worst case scenario, they finish with a bachelor's program uh, with us if they're not selected for IPAP. Keep in mind, there's 750 to 1,000 applicants each year for IPAP, and only 250 are selected. Oh, wow. It's a very competitive school, very tough to get into. So if they're not selected, you can at least have that bachelor's degree with us. And in addition, you can also use those 10 prerequisites that you tried to get into IPAP with and apply to a civilian PA school because you'll have the same prerequisites out there. So it's win-win for everyone. So we're very, very proud, very excited about this. This kicked off on 7 June, so it's it's in the infancy stage, and it's going extremely well. Yeah, you, you know, you, you get me get me thinking about when you talk about education, it's so important for our military to get, get their education prior to ever getting out of the service. What about a certification? Is there any type of certification program that's into that process, too, that you guys work? Just something like, I know that wasn't something I was going to ask you, but I just, I just started <laughs> thinking about that. So I throw you a curveball here a little bit. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so SMA, we, we do uh, look at the different types of certification. Many of our programs have certifications in them, embedded in them. Our, uh, I think business management has a couple. There's a few others. Uh, on healthcare side, Rebecca can explain some of those. Uh, but we're also always researching different opportunities to give our service members the credentials they need so when they get out in the military out of the military and in the civilian world they can find that employment that gainful employment put food on their table and live a, a nice life afterwards yeah dean do you want to add yeah, anything to that yeah Absolutely. So depending on the program, um, I know other schools at Purdue Global do this as well, but in health sciences, we have embedded professional credentialing exams into our capstone or the final courses for many of our programs. For example, the medical billing and coding certificate, our bachelor of science in health information management. And something to add about that is we realize that tuition assistance doesn't cover fees. So we waive them for our active duty service people. So they don't have to worry about that. So they'll be able to take that professional credentialing exam in the Bachelor of Science in Health Information Management. At the graduate level, we have different uh, groupings of courses that people can choose so that they can not only, for example, earn their Master's of Public Health, but in those elective slots, at the same time, earn a graduate micro-credential in global health or in telehealth. So we have ways uh, for those uh, professional certifications or micro-credentials built into our degree. Yeah, I know that uh, Purdue Global is really focused on helping the team. That's the active duty service center and his, his spouse. What do we do for spouses with Purdue Global? Dean, you want to answer that? Or, sorry, maybe you want to. Uh, do we help the spouses out also? Yes, I could tackle that. We do. We offer a, a nice discount for them. We do have a, a new program, too, which gives them almost the same rate as our service members. Uh, so we do care about our, our, our family members and, and want to provide them the educational dreams that they have, too. So we do have those types of programs for our, our family members and veterans. We don't want to leave our veterans out. Yeah. They get a 38% discount in our programs. They get the same evaluation of their military experience. For example, if you held that 68 whiskey or even our 11 Bravos, any MOS, you had that MOS, we give you credit for it, uh, for what you did in the military. Mm. Uh, Dean, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one of the exciting uh, projects that we have going forward for this year in the School of Health Sciences is we have a group of faculty members who have come together they represent military spouses, active duty, they're, they're vets, and they are working to see how we can support the families of our active duty service members in the classroom. Because we realize when people are deployed, that impacts not just the person who is deployed, but the entire family who is behind to support them. So they are going to work. We're going to provide some training to our faculty members. Uh, so that they are prepared to support the families as well. Well, you know what I love about talking to you guys is that Purdue just doesn't talk about it. They do it. And you've really set the stage for helping our uh, veteran community, just what you just said, Sergeant Major, our veterans, our active duty personnel, and the spouses. 
Uh, you're doing a tremendous job. And I, I from this old soldier now, uh, I appreciate all that you've done and all that you continue to do. So I love this discussion, but don't go anywhere. We're going to take another quick break. We have a lot more to talk about, so don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching your Next Mission video podcast. You're watching your Next Mission video podcast, proudly presented by Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Purdue Global, you're ready for a comeback. And with Purdue Global, you can do more than take classes. You can take charge of your story, of your career, of your life. Earn a degree you can be proud of and get an education employer's respect. Start your comeback at PurdueGlobal.edu. USAA. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with Dr. Rebecca Solator, Interim Dean of School of Health Science, and Dr. Richard Arona. I can't stop saying, I want to say Sergeant Major, Director of Military Health and Nursing, and Command Sergeant Major, who, uh, a U.S. Army retired of Purdue Global. And I want all of our viewers to reach out directly. Tell us what topics you like to cover. I always tell people, this is not my show, it's our show. We're all part of a team. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134, and guess what? I'll actually reach back out to you. Or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Dean Solitar and Dr. Rowan, I'm going to say it this time. We're heading into our final segment with you, and I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I have. I, I just love talking to somebody about education, where we're helping our military, and, and their families and veterans. And I just have a, a couple more questions. I'd like to examine where we were, you know, 20 years ago, where we are now, where we're going to go in five to 10 years. Uh, you know, Dr. Rowan, or Sergeant Major, you want to answer that one? I do. This SMA is, you know, it's funny. Uh... I came in in the 80s, and uh, I remember a couple of my peers where they got in a little trouble, and the judge said, you either go in the Army or you go to jail. So you, you think about the education system back then. It was very little. Most of our enlisted folks didn't have uh, college at all. There was a handful maybe that, that had a degree or some college. But as time progressed, the military started embedding education into the promotion system, yeah. which would motivate our soldiers, our sailors, our our service members to pursue the education part of that. And um, it was tough for them. You had a very robust military mission through the day with unpredictable hours. You get off work, then you have to balance that with your family. And then, oh, by the way, it's time to go to college. And online didn't exist in the 80s and didn't, didn't exist until the late 1990s. So you were going to a ground campus uh, classroom. And oh, by the way, when you PCS, you'd go to a new duty station. And guess what? That university usually wasn't there. And you'd have to start all over with the local universities that were assigned to that base. So you'd lose credit hours. So a lot of that was a very tedious process. I was uh, uh, one of those where I had over 200 credits, but no degree. So eventually, the online kit system kicked in, uh, it became credible because initially online was frowned upon and it it didn't have a lot of credibility, but uh, in the early 200, 200, uh, 2000s, it started to get that credibility. And our, our service members were able to use that mechanism to balance things a little better. They were able to do their college assignments, uh, and balance their schedule around the military needs. So that helped a lot. So in today's military, it's common for a service member to have a degree, an associate's, bachelor's, and many working on their master's. And I see the future, the next 10, 15 years, much of the same with military focused on education, our service members being educated and uh, continuing that process. Yeah. D Dean, you want to add anything to that? I, you know, I'd like to just share that Purdue Global now is looking at the support of the military differently than, than we did 10 years ago. 
we know that we have representation who can go out to the bases to speak with the military to say, hey, what, what are your needs? How can we support what's going on in the military? We're also working with, with our vets to say, okay, they've transitioned to the civilian life. How can we use the transferable skills that you earned in the military to make you successful? in the civilian world. So we're really listening and we have the flexibility to create programs. And we're always open to ideas in better ways to to offer support in addition to offering new programs. Yeah, I, I think a couple of things have changed the military. I remember what you was, you was talking about, Sergeant Major, when I came in, there wasn't a big push on education. You know, you just work, we're, and let's be honest, our job is to fight and win our nation's wars. And, and we're more focused on wars than education. But I think a few things changed. One is technology changed, equipment changed. Uh, we need to get better educated people. And we realized that we need to prepare people for the future. And when you talk about education, <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk about education, it's about preparing our service members uh, for the future. I remember uh, when I first come in this years ago, uh, probably before you guys were born, I don't know, but uh, years ago when, uh, when I was down at Fort Benning, we had uh, McNamara's 100,000. In the average educational level, I think I want to say it was a fourth grade education during Vietnam. And uh, a lot of people came in, but, but we worked with them, got their GEDs, got their education. And a lot of them that I knew that went on to get master's degrees in the military. Sergeant Major, you got any stories like that that you can share with me that you had any stories or good stories about the Purdue and education that you can tell the audience about? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and this is what makes my job so special. I'm blessed to teach the last class of capstone before they earn their associate's degree. And I have single parents. I have folks that struggled uh, with school in high school, barely passed, uh, had zero confidence in earning a college degree. That's why many of them came in the military. So as the process goes through completion and they're in their last course, we have our final class and we talk about that. And you just see many of them crying, many of them telling me their stories, how proud they are now, their first time recipient of a college degree in their family. And it, it just... It, it just warms your heart to see that yeah. we are helping folks out there. Um, some that are National Guard and reservists that because of their education now were promoted. Uh, I have one kid that I mentioned, uh, uh, gosh, he, he struggled in the military or struggled in high school, went on. He just, as of yesterday, finished his master's degree. Oh, wow. And each level he received, he, he just had that burst of co confidence SMA. Hey, I did this. I can do it again. Yeah. And did the bachelor's and then did the master's. And now he's talking about going on for the doctorate. So uh, super, super proud of that. And that's what really, really drives me in this position, seeing the success rate that we have and what we're doing and touching the lives of service members, just like when we wore the uniform. Education changes lives. And that's the that's the bottom line. Dean, you got any stories? I wasn't going to ask you this, but I'll ask you too. Any stories, any stories you want to share with the audience? Well, I am blessed to be able to hand out the diplomas at graduation. Oh, wow, and that's I'll great. Yeah, that yeah. I am, you know, I'm able to thank people for their service in person. And I also get to hear the stories. And when you look at the metrics in the School of Health Sciences, our military and mili military affiliated students have higher graduation rates, yeah. and better persistence rates, because they are just really, really dedicated. And so I get to hear the stories firsthand, whether they are transitioning into the civilian world or they've gotten um, promotions in the military. So it's very exciting. We really are making a, a difference in their lives. And I appreciate the dedication because they are juggling so many different responsibilities at the same time as going to school. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't going to ask you a question, but you guys, you, you guys are doing so much for our veterans. If there's one thing you wish you could do, maybe a, a little bit better or, or maybe change the lives of veterans and families. And Dean, I'm going to start with you. What would it be? Was, is there anything that you, you know, about education that you wish the veterans and maybe the listeners would, you know, need to do or, or think about anyway? Well, I would say that we appreciate their transferable skills. Uh, we have someone I had mentioned before who worked for a Center for Career Advancement building our skill bridge program. And she said, well, I was building bombs in the military. How does this translate right yeah. to the to the civilian world, but she was able to figure it out. And so we're here. We have a wonderful support team um, for veterans. So if they're looking to see, you know, how do I translate what I did when, when I was um, giving my service into the civilian world, 
we are happy to have those conversations with them. There you go. Anything you wish you could do and haven't done yet, uh, Sergeant Major? You know, I'm glad you asked that, SMA. There is something. Now, I think outside the box a little bit. I get a little crazy sometimes. And I would embed college credits into AIT because these oh, kids are so skilled at all they do. You know, uh, we spend so much money in TA and so much money in the GI Bill. If we embedded that the, those funds into AIT and gave them those credentials up front, I think we'd go a lot long ways. Uh, part of the... Research I did in my PhD was about the transferability of military skills into the civilian world. I, for example, was a dental hygienist. I could clean the general's teeth uh, on down. Uh, but yet when I leave the military, those skill sets are non-existent. I have to go back to dental school or dental hygiene school and the whole thing. So the transferability of those skills, embedding the credentials into these uh, service members, uh, you know, I think would go a long way. So that's what I would change if I was king up for a day. If I was king for a day, here's what I would change. I would change when you come into the military, they put you on an educational program right from day one and it sort of maps it out. So, so if I stay four years, I got a two year degree. If I say eight years, I got a, you know what I'm talking about? So you slowly but surely, if you stay 20, if you, and you can have an accelerated program. So if you stayed four years and you want to get a bachelor's degree, here's what you got to do. But I, I'd show them how you can map that course out. On the other side of that is, I think I'd have a, a certification program right off the side of that too. So you show them up front about what you need to, in preparation for your next life after the military. So I think uh, this is, first of all, I, I can't thank you guys enough for what you're doing. You're doing a tremendous job for our veterans and families and, and you're making a difference. And you're probably making a difference with a lot of people's lives you, you'll, you'll never meet or never talk to. But so thanks you a lot. Any final thoughts, anything that you maybe, I, I tried to ask you a couple of additional questions, but any <laughs> final thoughts that, uh, that you want to share with the audience? Dean, we'll start with you. Any, anything you want to share with the audience? The audience to know that Purdue Global offers a range of degrees from micro-credentials through doctoral degrees in many fields, not just in the School of Health Sciences, so they're interested, we are happy to, to speak with them and share the information. And then, of course, I'd also like to thank everyone for their service. So hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say Dr. Rona this time. Make sure I get it right. Go ahead, Dr. Rona. Anything you yes, want to share? Babe. Yes, <laughs> I have two final thoughts. That I, right. want to, I want the uh, audience to please listen to, to the first one especially. One of the benefits you receive for wearing this uniform is, is an education benefit. Yeah, I see so many of our folks that don't take advantage of it. Wait till they're in their 18th year or their 19th year. Oh, I'm going to go to school or or some don't do it at all. And then they're they retire. And guess what? They don't have that degree and they have to work at uh, a lower end job, which they shouldn't. They have the credentials. They have the skills. Get the education they need. So take advantage of your education. Absolutely. Benefits. You've earned that. Uh, the second thing I want to send out there to our audience is that if there's a, a, a need, an educational need, a pathway that we haven't built or there's not, not one in the inventory in the other universities, because we have a lot of great universities out there in our in our country. Uh, and if there's not a pathway, let us know. We like to take that need. We put a business plan together. And if there's value in building a program for them, we'll do that. So please keep that in mind. All right. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, thanks a lot for that. But I'm going to get you to do one thing for before I leave. I'm going to go one, two, three. I want you both in unison to say hua. That's an army way. But, but it's never I way. have one question. Okay, though, what's that? All right. Go. All right, get whip it on me. When I was a young troop, you would go visit us and you would do these one arm push ups. How many of those can you still do? Uh, let me say zero. <laughs> 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 I probably can All knock right. out one or two. All right, you're right. I'm going to see that motivation. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for coming on the show. I appreciate that. Thank you for having us, Sesame. Thank you. Hey, thanks to Dr. Rebecca Zolotar and Dr. Richard Arona, Sergeant Major, for being with Purdue Global uh, today. I, uh, I'm Jack Eltoli, 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, and you've been watching your next mission video podcast. And thank you for watching today. Please visit our website at yournextmission.org and leave me a review. I always, hope, I always hope it's a good review, but if it's a, a bad one I can take, that'll make our show better. You can also visit our nonprofit and corporate partners there where you can see all the jobs and services that are available for you. Please know we want to assist you any way we can. I'm going to say that again. Please know we want to assist you any way we can. 
You can follow me on all my personal social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and, and Rumble. And if you've enjoyed our discussion with Dr. Solitar and Dr. Rona, please like us. Click on that subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to click on the bell next to the subscribe button re to receive notifications of uh, all of our upcoming video podcasts. We want to hear from you. Please send me a message or send me a text at 844-424-1134 uh, or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Dr. Rebecca Solator and Dr. Richard Arona for joining us today. It was just great having them on the show. And and when you think about education and you think about uh, certification, it's really preparation to uh, getting out of the military. You know, you've served in the military. You've uh, given whether or not it's three years or 30 years or 36 years like myself, but you've dedicated your life to our country. And your country owes you, I don't know if they owe you, but you need to make sure you prepare yourself to get out of the service for that, for that next stage of your life. So... Don't sit back. Get your education prior to ever getting out of the military. Not just you, but also your spouse and, and your children. Get as much education and preparation to getting out of the military. And I tell you that if you go to Purdue, uh, they'll make sure that they pave that pathway for you for the, for, for the future. Again, thanks for watching. And thanks to New Mind Studios on the course, our presenting sponsors, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, and USAA. We appreciate it all you do for our military. And as always, see you on the high ground. Hoo up! You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.